What are you doing here? I thought you were going to Carson City. You, you gave me bad directions. No, I gave you wrong directions. Shanghai Noon is a 2000s Western martial arts comedy focusing on the characters of Chon Wang and Rio Bannon, played by Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson respectively, as they joined forces in the rescue of Princess Pei Pei, played by Lucy Liu, who ran away from an arranged marriage only to be kidnapped by Lo Fong, an enemy of the Emperor. The film is intended to highlight the vast amount of differences and similarities between the East and the West, with Wang and Roy slowly beginning to bond and embrace each other's cultures to form a strong friendship during their quest. You really are the Shanghai kid. You've got some enjoyable comedy, the trademark bombastic Jackie Chan action scenes, shootouts, chases, solid characters, a riveting score, and a main character whose name is a slang term for a penis. What more do you need from a film? Royal Bannon. My name's Zhang Wen. John Wayne? Zhang Wen. That's a terrible cowboy name. We open in 1881 in the Forbidden City in Beijing, as Princess Pei Pei begins her arranged marriage to the Emperor, and she seeks a way to escape from it. Her English tutor offers her a way to escape on a ship to the US, but leaves behind a letter demanding a ransom from the Emperor of China for her safe return. Wang overhears the plan to escape and tries to stop her, but due to his blind obedience, he refuses to stop her when she orders him to stop following her. The Emperor sends three royal guards and his interpreter to go to retrieve the princess, with the interpreter, Wang's uncle, convincing them to send Wang as well. During their train ride, Roy and his gang attempt to rob the train, but complications arise when Wallace ends up killing the uncle and causing Wang to foil their plans. Wallace then betrays Roy and takes over the gang. Pei Pei arrives at her destination, only to realise the estate is run by Lo Fong, a traitor to China that runs a camp which uses Chinese immigrants for slave labour. One thing about the Chinese, Mr Andrews, We do not renegotiate. Roy has been buried alive by his gang, and Wang demands to know where Carson City is. Roy tells him, under the belief that Wang will dig him out, only for Wang to walk away, leaving only two chopsticks for him to dig himself out. Wang climbs over the nearby mountains and rescues a Sioux boy from a rival Native American tribe, with him marrying the boy's sister, Falling Leaves, as a reward. Arriving in a small town, Wang encounters Roy, who had escaped from the dig site and given Wang wrong directions, with the two then being thrown in jail after starting a bar brawl. Speaking to each other, Roy is tempted to help Wang after hearing about the ransom, until Falling Leaves breaks the two out and the three of them continue their journey, with Wang learning about life in the West. In Carson City, the two are tracked by Van Cleef, a corrupt sheriff marshal in the employment of Fong, with the two fighting to escape, while Fong forces Pei Pei to work on his camp, threatening to kill the other workers if she escapes. Wang and Roy arrive at Roy's hideout, a whole house near the city, although Van Cleef manages to track them down and imprison them. Taking them to Fong, Fong demands the gold, cutting Wang's Manchu Q, meaning he is forever forsaken from returning to China, and then having both of them sentenced to death. With the help of falling leaves, they manage to escape, with Wang refusing to work alongside Roy after overhearing Roy earlier tell a prostitute that they are not friends, despite their travels and honour-bound handshake. Finding Pei Pei, Wang attempts to rescue her, but she refuses to lead the immigrants to be condemned to death, with Wang fighting off Fong's forces before being rescued by Roy. I followed you, so what? What am I supposed to do, let you wander off? You're a greenhorn! You'll get killed out here! The next day, the Imperial Guard arrive at the Mission City Church to give the gold for the princess, but the exchange is complicated when Wang and Roy arrive to stop them, with Wang wishing to respect the princess's desire to not return to China. Van Cleef arrives to assist Fong, leading to a shootout with Roy while Fong, Wang and the Imperial Guards fight each other for control of the princess. Eventually, Wang is the only one standing to protect the princess, while Roy, despite being down to his last bullet and lured to stand in the open by Van Cleef lying about being down to his last bullet, manages to to avoid being shot and kills Van Cleef. After a long fight, Pei Pei and Wang manage to kill Fong. The royal guards agree to let Pei Pei stay in the US, and Fallen Leaves and her tribe arrive to stop Wallace and the gang attacking the group. Pei Pei and Wang hold hands, Roy and Fallen Leaves kiss, and in the end the two become sheriffs, with Roy revealing that his birth name is Wyatt Earp as the two stop a train robbery. Come on Roy, let's go say howdy. Let's go! Yeah! 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 yeah.
This film is an absolute gem to sit through, being a perfect combination of comedic Wild Western while also being a philosophical Kung Fu Eastern. You'd think trying to balance so much in a short film would be a difficult task, but you end up hooked throughout, especially as the humour is consistent but not overbearing, allowing the themes and serious moments to get their time to shine even during times when it's trying to be comedic. And so is the ponytail. Now look. <laughs> 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 Ah, didn't look that bad, actually. Chon Wang is a member of the Chinese Royal Guard, who has wholly devoted his life to the Emperor and the royal families of China. Because of this, he struggles to make decisions for himself, instead blindly obeying those above him and choosing not to engage in dishonourable actions, even if it would be in service of what he believes is a good cause. As he starts his journey in the US, he is quickly exposed to the fact that not only can honour and duty mean different things to different people, but that these concepts can also be detrimental to the greater good. Ultimately, he still chooses honour and duty, but it will be an honour and duty he wishes to follow, and not one he is expected to blindly obey, helping Pei Pei be an ambassador for the Chinese immigrants, and he himself becoming a sheriff who helps the common people. You guys, you stay here. This is your battle. No, we stick together. We are partners. Royal Bannon is introduced as a smart and charismatic thief that attempts to rob the train Wang is on. He is quickly shown to not actually want to harm anyone, and has some morals that he refuses to cross, with it being apparent to the audience that he doesn't actually want to be an outlaw that hurts people, only wanting a bit of money to have some luxuries in the harsh society he lives in. Throughout the movie, he starts to slowly enjoy the fact that he is helping people and having a genuine friend around instead of hanging around untrustworthy outlaws, and ultimately chooses to forego the gold and the criminal lifestyle he had attempted to cultivate for himself and to be a better man, choosing to go for a more adventurous life as a sheriff alongside a genuine friend he can count on. Reach for the sky, Baldy! That's right, it's Roy. Am I interrupting? Princess Pei Pei is shown as a woman trapped in a society run by men, where she has no agency for herself and is about to be married off to the Emperor, choosing to run away from her society to avoid doing so. Although she has to give up her title and royalty, and is captured and abused, she actually enjoys having some responsibilities and having genuine connections to the people in the camp. And after she is freed, she chooses to try and make things better for the unfairly treated immigrants in the US and starts a relationship with Wang instead of returning to China. I thought you might be hungry. You were wrong. Lo Fong is a Chinese traitor that fled from China after rebelling against the royal family, using his outside thinking and resourcefulness to create labour camps and trick a royal princess into becoming his hostage. Cunning, ruthless, a highly skilled warrior and someone who is able to exploit people's weaknesses against them, Lo Fong is a very entertaining villain, with Roger Wan doing an excellent job of playing a man who's aware of his power and place in the world. He will never learn. He can only follow orders. Police Marshal Van Cleef is a corrupt officer of the law that will happily engage in illegal activities and murder those who oppose him for any sort of gain, working alongside Fong to capture Pei Pei for the Imperial Gold. Snarky, charismatic and a sadistic killer, Xander Berkeley does a great job of playing a corrupt officer of the law who will do anything out of greed and cruelty. Well, well. Nice to see we're all churchgoers. The set, prop and costume design for the movie is really good, with the team even shooting in the Forbidden City to really sell the opening in China. And the rest of the movie, despite being shot in Canada, looks like a classic American western. From the steam trains to the old timey towns to the root and toot and cowboy shooting. The comedy is present throughout the film, constantly giving the audience moments of levity even during the most serious and dramatic moments. That being said, it's not obnoxiously thrown in. They don't hold up the scenes to make sure that the comedy lands and people register with the joke. They use just the right amount to make sure the audience gets a small chuckle and then moves on. I hate you! No, but you're getting really close. And then we have the fight scenes. Now, I think these are awesome to look at, but let's get a second opinion from someone who's a big fan of fight scenes. Dark Hour, take it away. Thanks, Lumar. If you've seen any other comedy film starring Jackie Chan, then you already know how fluid, improvisational, and just how straight up entertaining the fight scenes in this movie are, allowing for Chan to flex both his fighting skills as well as his comedic chops. The settings also vary a great deal from fight to fight, from your typical knockdown, drag out Western bar brawl to an adrenaline filled chase through the woods and even a climactic three-way dance in an old church. 
Each instance of combat has its own unique feel, utilizing the environment and styles which it allows. The bar brawl, for instance, places heavy focus on punching and putting people through tables. Not unlike something you might see on a Friday night in Asbury Park, New Jersey. The tussle in the woods, on the other hand, is a lot more improvisational. Utilizing unorthodox tactics to allow for Wang to fight multiple opponents, and even getting a little aid from the location itself. Lastly, our sinful romp in the church is played seriously featuring more professional style techniques and choreography. This due to Wang having to face off against four other individuals with the same training as him. But seeing as how this is still Jackie Chan, a little comedy is to be expected. The choreography and tension in these scenes will be right up your alley due to the commitment of everyone involved to get the perfect looking shots each time. Thank you, Dark Hour. Finally, the themes. The first one, and the one that is focused on less, is the idea that someone who might seem insignificant to others might actually hold a lot more significance in people's lives, with the film even drawing parallels with the princess and the frog. Chon Wang is a lowly royal guard in the Forbidden City, not seen as holding any significance to anyone around him, with even his fellow soldiers and superiors viewing him in contempt. However, much like the frog, Wang is actually an individual with a lot of hidden depth, viewing the princess as an actual person, becoming a saviour to a Sioux tribe, and going on to be a sheriff defending the citizens of Nevada, becoming a hero in the eyes of Pepe. And then you have the themes of honour and duty, and what these things mean to different societies. Stop! You're not in the East, okay? You're not in China. This is the West. The sun doesn't rise here, it sets here. The Qing Dynasty was a time where you would live your life as dictated by the royal family, and any attempts of individuality were punished. Even hair styles were enforced on the men, with all men expected to have short hair at the front and let the hair on the back grow and never be cut. For Wang, he is expected to obey the royal families without question, which is how the events of the film kick off. He could have stopped the princess from leaving right there, keeping her in the palace and securing the bride of the emperor for marriage. However, because she orders him to stop, he does, despite letting her go being a detriment for the royal family. It's only during his quest across the west that he begins to realise that you can lead a life full of honour without letting it blind you into being immoral, such as how he initially wants to rescue Pei Pei and bring her back to China. But when she refuses and he is aware that the other immigrants will be killed if she leaves, he gives up on the rescue, instead choosing to try and stop his fellow guardsmen from dragging her back to China. This is the west. not the east and the sun may rise where we come from but here is where he sets Roy is an outlaw that constantly tries to set up heists and robberies in order to make money, and should be considered a bad guy. However, despite being a bad guy, he still has honour to him, and throughout the movie we see that he only does what he does because he's directionless and in need of a goal. He refuses to kill people, he doesn't take any money or jewellery from the elderly and a widowed woman, and he keeps his promise to Wang even after they fall out with each other, ultimately realising he can have an adventurous life as a sheriff while also being able to live up to the more honourable aspects of his character but don't talk about the princess anymore. Word of honor. Overall, this film is an absolute blast to get through, being an impressive mishmash of a bunch of different genres that all work fluidly together, having great characters, themes, comedy, fight scenes and pacing. And if you haven't seen this film yet, I highly encourage you to. It's a wonderful use of 110 minutes and you get to see the film that gave Owen Wilson his first glimpse of star power. Where's Princess Pepe? Stop, come on, we're men, we're not pinatas. Thanks for watching lads and lasses, if you enjoyed this video please consider liking, subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. Sharing always helps and if you're feeling really generous please consider my Patreon or YouTube membership. I also have a Twitter and occasionally I do live streams. But most of all I just hope you had a great day and hopefully I will see you in the next video.